Well, basically, if the Affordable Care Act requires any employer over a certain size and meeting other criteria to provide health insurance to its employees. Hobby Lobby is a closely held corporation, family-owned corporation, that has more than 50 employees and meets some of the other criteria that would require it under the ACA to provide health insurance to, to its employees. Regulations promulgated under the ACA also require uh, firms like Hobby Lobby to provide contraceptive uh, coverage to their female employees. Hobby Lobby objects to this requirement that it provides certain types of contraception to its female employees and has invoked the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, claiming that such a requirement would place a substantial burden on the exercise of religion by the corporation and also by uh, its owners. So the Obama administration disagrees. They don't dispute that Hobby Lobby is sincere in their religious convictions and that their motivations are uh, sincerely uh, held and they're sincerely religiously motivated. Uh, but the administration claims that a corporation, a for-profit corporation, cannot be a person for purposes of RIFRA. And because the ACA regulations apply only to corporations, uh, there's no RIFRA claim in this case. We think they're wrong. And here's why we disagree with the administration, uh, in short. First of all, as an empirical matter, we observe all the time in the real world for-profit corporations adopting practices that reflect the religious belief of their shareholders. A classic example would be a grocery store that doesn't open on the Sabbath, whether it's the Christian Sabbath or the Jewish Sabbath. And so far as we know, there's been no objection as a matter of corporate law or corporate law principles to that type of exercise of religion by for-profit corporations at the behest of the corporation's shareholders. We also explain in the paper that corporate law, modern corporate law, is extremely flexible and it provides various uh, features and attributes that empower shareholders, if they wish, to induce the corporation they own to adopt religiously motivated practices. Uh, they can amend the corporate charter, they can adopt bylaw provisions, or they can adopt shareholder agreements, for instance, and there are other examples as well, that would induce the corporation to pursue religiously motivated objective, objectives at the behest of the shareholders. And again, this has been happening for decades, uh, and there's been no objection that we know as a matter of corporate law to this practice. So from our perspective, for-profit corporations, uh, when it comes to exercising religion, are no more or less empowered to do so than nonprofit corporations, religious corporations, or unincorporated for-profit entities. In that sense, corporations are by no means unique, and thus they readily satisfy uh, the test for RIFRA personhood under the statute. Now, part of the argument that's been made in this case is that it doesn't really make any sense to um, uh, protect religious exercise by for-profit corporations. Uh, the idea there being is that when you go out into the marketplace and you engage in for-profit conduct, uh, you're somehow doing something that is inherently um, unreligious, uh, or you're engaged in a kind of um, activity where we just shouldn't uh, um, be concerned about protecting religion. We think that's uh, mistaken for a couple of reasons. So first, many, many different religious traditions don't acknowledge any distinction between some sort of private religious sphere and a public and economic sphere. And in fact, uh, many religious people would regard it as being uh, pernicious or impious to say that you should only practice your religion on Sunday or when you go to the mosque or when you go to the church or the synagogue, but that it shouldn't have any influence on your behavior when you're out living your commercial life uh, in the marketplace. People feel that they are religiously called upon right, to live their religion uh, in all aspects of their life. That's a reality of religion uh, that the law ought to uh, 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 acknowledge. Corporations are just instrumentalities by which people act in the world. Uh, in that way, uh, corporate uh, law is like property law or contract law. And just as people use property, for example, to pursue religious ends, for example, they might use uh, their property to um, um, hold a religious meeting or something like that, uh, corporations are just the religious mechanisms that people use to affect their um, um, goals in the world. And when people have religious goals, they use corporations as a way of pursuing those religious goals. There's nothing particularly nefarious uh, or um, about this, uh, and there's no reason that people shouldn't be pre permitted uh, to do, use corporations to pursue their religious goals just as they can use property or contract or other legal mechanisms. It's important to emphasize there's nothing novel or revolutionary about saying that a for-profit corporation is a person with legal rights. 
Uh, for over a hundred years, the Supreme Court has said, for example, that for-profit corporations are persons that have rights under the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. For-profit corporations are persons that have rights under the First Amendment to the Constitution. In this case, we're talking about a federal statute uh, that confers rights on persons, but there's nothing unusual about saying that persons includes corporations. And indeed, there is a congressional law called the Dictionary Act, which states that any time in federal law the term person is used, unless there's some compelling reason to think otherwise, person includes for-profit corporation. The Obama administration and others have put forward a parade of horribles that's going to happen if corporations are able to claim that they are persons for purposes of RIFRA. For example, uh, people have argued that there will be lots of disputes about corporate governance, about what sorts of religions corporations should choose or should they not choose. There might be derivative suits against corporations for failing uh, to adopt a particular uh, religion, and that in injecting religion uh, into the corporate context is going to be inherently divisive and destructive. Uh, so there are two responses to that argument. The first is, religion's already present in, in corporations constantly. Um, and so if all of these disputes and problems were going to happen, that would have happened a long time ago. This actually isn't new. There's lots of religious corporations and, and religiously infused for-profit businesses. Uh, so if, if this was going to happen, it already would have happened. The second uh, response is to say, there are actually lots of issues involved in corporate governance where people disagree with one another. People involved in corporate governance disagree over business strategies. They disagree over the extent to which corporations should be involved in corporate social responsibility or other charitable activities. Uh, they disagree about what sort of brands and markets corporations should be involved in. So the fact that people disagree about um, corporate governance has never been a reason uh, for forbidding corporations from engaging in particular kinds of activities. By and large, the result uh, or the approach that's taken by American corporate law is to provide great flexibility, uh, let uh, corporations pursue lots of different models of business, lots of different kinds of ways of balancing the concerns of profits against other kinds of concerns, and then let consumers and investors decide through the marketplace which corporations are going to succeed and which ones will fail. Another horrible that some invoke uh, is to fear that if for-profit corporations are rougher persons, then large publicly held corporations will be able to assert uh, RIFRA and thereby avoid various federal regulations uh, and federal statutes. Uh, people might say, well, Walmart perhaps could assert that, well, it has a religion and therefore it doesn't have to abide by various federal regulations. Uh, we think this is unlikely. Uh, while Walmart, we do believe, is a person within the meaning of RIFRA, that's only the first step in a RIFRA analysis. The next step would be to determine whether or not a for-profit corporation has a sincerely held religious belief. And we think with a firm like Walmart or other publicly traded firms with a large number of diverse shareholders, it would be far more difficult for that type of firm to assert that it has a sincerely held religious belief than it is for a firm like Hobby Lobby, which has five owners, all members of the same family, um, who all hold the same religious belief. So while it's possible that a firm like Walmart could, in some narrow circumstances, assert that it has a sincerely held religious belief and thereby invoke RIFRA for that reason, we think it's far less likely than uh, in the context of a closely held corporation like Hobby Lobby and other firms. We don't dispute uh, that under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, the government can substantially burden the religious exercise of a person uh, if it is necessary in pursuit of a compelling government interest. There are times when it's all right for the government to burden religious exercise because it's pursuing some really, really important goal. And it's certainly uh, uh, conceivable that in the case of very large publicly traded corporations, because these sorts of entities can have very, very strong and powerful influence on society, that the government's interest in regulating them might be heightened in a way that wouldn't be present in the case of, say, a smaller firm or a closely held firm or a sole proprietorship. And that seems like a perfectly reasonable kind of analysis for the courts uh, to engage in, and that's certainly something that's contemplated by RIFRA. Our objection is to the notion that for-profit corporations are not persons under RIFRA, and so that therefore the conduct that people engage in in the context of a for-profit corporation is conduct in a kind of religious liberty-free zone. And given how much of our lives in the modern world take place in the context of for-profit corporations, we think it's potentially very troubling to say that in that context, um, the uh, claims of religious freedom simply don't exist.